So it's been basically two weeks since I pulled my SIM from my 10s Max and made the S10 Plus my main device in an attempt to see how much greener the grass is on the other side. And let me tell you, it definitely is in a lot of ways, but it's patchy. I'm working on my full detailed review of the S10 Plus from an iPhone user's perspective, so make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so you don't miss out. But for now, here are the biggest things that stuck out so far. First off, Face ID is amazing. I mean, Separately. I already knew that before, but switching over to the S10 Plus, I could tell that this is definitely much easier to use and it's more convenient. The ultrasonic sensor is very cool and it's also very secure, which you'd know if you watched our fingerprint hack video, uh, but it really is a hit and miss. And I did add my thumbprint additional times, which did help, but I also tried to learn it, how much pressure, how fast, but it still misses quite often and I have to redo it multiple times, which is quite frustrating. Face ID is effortless, fairly quick, and works in apps without needing to do anything. Now above the ultrasonic sensor is the best smartphone display I've ever put my eyes on. Definitely more detailed than its high res setting, and watching movies with it is fantastic, especially in HDR. Now the iPhone isn't bad by any means, but you do notice a difference switching back to it, especially if you're streaming 1440p with a Samsung. Along with that, the dual speakers are really loud. After a lot of use, I don't think they sound as good as the iPhones, but I would take that as a trade-off because when you're in a loud environment or you're watching a video that's fairly quiet, it's nice to have the extra volume. The battery powering this gorgeous display is over 25% larger than the one in my 10s Max, but does it help in the real world? Honestly, I'm not too sure. Both of them last a full day of heavy use, but are close to dead when I go to plug them in at night. So I'll take a closer look at this for my full detailed review. One thing I had to change are the icon packs since they are very cartoony in my opinion. I also hated the way the stock keyboard worked and I swapped it out for the Swift keyboard. I remember hearing that Apple went through a ton of keyboard iterations before Steve was happy and this really shows when using the iPhone, the keyboard just works great. In general, you have a ton of customizations and options with the S10 Plus, but it does take more effort. And overall, I'm happy with how my iPhone works and it kind of just gets out of the way. One thing I'm not happy about are the features that are completely excluded in iOS versions of apps that I saw in multiple different ones. The biggest one probably being YouTube YouTube's picture-in-picture -picture mode, which is so helpful if you're multitasking. I both love and hate the notifications. On one end, the S10 Plus and Android provide much greater looking notifications with more info like thumbnails for YouTube videos. If you Chromecast content, you get constant controls in the notifications, and one thing I love is having that constant notification bar where I can see if I get new emails and texts before I deal with them. It's really helpful if you're doing something when you get a notification to not just forget later. With a quick glance, I can see if I'm in silent mode, if my alarm is on, and a bunch of other icons and notifications. Along with that, I like the always on display and I really wish Apple would implement this now that their high-end flagships have OLED displays. Along with these notification differences, we also get a lot more annoying ones that I wasn't used to with iOS. System notifications, downloads, and just plain ads for apps I didn't download like Spotify. Amazon is suggesting products I should buy, Modern Combat needs reinforcements, and Asphalt 9 just refueled my car. You could definitely disable and adjust notifications for apps, but these are just things I didn't have have to deal with before. Now, let's talk about the cameras. I absolutely love the wide angle lens, and even though I don't use it that often, when you're in a situation where you can use it, it's really great to have. You can also get some really cool perspectives. The Samsung photos have more contrast and saturation than the iPhones, which is great if you don't like to edit. One big difference between the two is the portrait mode being wide compared to telephoto, and there are pluses to both, so I really wish that both of these companies would give us the option to use either one, whichever fits the need. Samsung has made major strides in terms of image quality, especially if you look at just the Note 9 that was released half a year ago, and the photo quality is basically comparable. The only downside about the S10's camera is the shutter lag. While it does mean the images have less noise, I often found myself missing shots of my kids because it actually takes a little bit of time from the time that you press the shutter button until the photo is actually taken, where the iPhone is basically instant. The iPhone feels like a powerful phone for minimalists. It just works. Yes, you have much less customizations and features, much fewer options when you're taking photos, and everything is much cleaner at the expense of notifications, but it just works and is less frustrating. If you own other Apple products, the iPhone is an even better device with continuity, AirPlay, AirDrop, etc. This has been the case for years, but what hasn't always been the case was the hardware quality, both with materials and feel, and other things like camera and sound quality. The iPhone used to be ahead in many ways, but with the Galaxy S10 series, I feel like this is the first time I could say that the hardware is actually better overall. Thank you guys for watching my two week real world comparison between the devices. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask in the comment section below and I'll try to cover them in my full detailed review of the Galaxy S10 Plus. If you wanna see that, make sure to hit that subscribe button right over there. This has been Max with Max Tech and I'll see you in the next video.